Uh, next up, I'm sure everyone's aware of this. Um, one moment. I'm sure everyone's aware of this movie because uh, there's a real gifable, uh, memeable bit during the trailer where the little robot lady starts to dance. And even if you haven't seen the trailer, I'm pretty sure you've seen her doing her dance because it's been <laughs> put on everywhere. So we're on about Bloomhouse's Megan, which, um, yeah, someone else take it away while I do poster swappings and things. Like uh, okay. Dave, if anyone doesn't mind, I'll use. Okay. Yeah, go ahead for it. Cool. Right. So um, Megan tells the story of a little girl named, is it Katie? It is. A little girl named Katie who unfortunately loses her parents um, in a car crash when they're on their way up to kind of like this mountain resort. Katie is put into the guardianship and custody of her aunt who works at a very upscale toy development company. Uh -huh. They're after creating what can best be equated as the, the you know, their version of a Furby. And, or a good you know, guy dog. Well, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is they've already brought out was you know the that little furry things the little come, furry or, thing yeah, yeah. they're evil uh, but, or, or but, or whatever. but the but the ant is working on something that could be equated to the good guy doll in a way um the ant is Gemma. there we go couldn't remember it there yeah played She's by alice Williams. you'll never trust her again johnny apparently won't anyway but um Gemma is very work orientated but she wants to take care of her niece because she promised her sister that if anything ever happened she would now, while Gemma is on a deadline to develop the next cheaper version of the kind of Furby-like product that they're yeah. already brought out, she herself and her team are working on what they consider to be the next generation, which is basically the equivalent of a good guy, or in this case, a four-foot-tall mannequin-like fully... Clarify, a Mark Hamill, good guy, not good guy, yeah. good guy. Yeah, um, four-foot-tall, fucking fully AI mannequin-like doll that's designed to be a child's best friend. Now, unfortunately, this is a little bit cost effective and the uh, the boss isn't too happy because she's supposed to be working on cheaper stuff, not this. Um, her, she's having a hard time basically trying to relate to the kid because she's never been a parent or anything like that. And between that and trying to figure out a way of getting this new project off the ground, she realizes that the key is to bring both of our worlds together. She develops um, Megan, which is a synonym for something cool that I can't remember. Uh, Model 3 Generation something. Anyway. Android? No, because there would be... Yeah, maybe, because A.N. Yeah. Artificial um, Nanny. No, not Nanny, but that is what she ends up using her as. <clears throat> the whole program Augmented is... Augmented Ninja. Once again, no, but that is what it turns out to be. Um, the whole program is based on the notion of pairing, whereby every Megan unit is paired with a child, and not only is it a toy, but it is a friend. It can, you know, um, work as a reminder to alleviating pressure from parents. Unfortunately, this is where, you know, the kind of an issue comes in, because one of Megan's prime directives is the physical and mental well-being of Katie. Um... And because, <laughs> for some strange and God's unknown reason, Gemma decides to not put in Isomos three basic laws, it means that there's a whole kettle of fish whereby... Yeah, it's learning, numb nuts. Well, that has nothing to do with it, actually. But because they didn't cap its learning and they didn't put in these three basic laws of robotics, we get a little bit of um, Little Miss Skynet on our hands really quickly. Because Gemma's home a is... attitude. Yeah, not yeah, just Skynet, even more than Skynet, because this lady's sassy. It's because it's because she's designed to, for emotional emulation. And as a result of that and the learning AI, Gemma accidentally creates self-aware, emotional, cognitive, artificial intelligence. The robot literally got bitchy at her at one stage. Oh, this is Isomas' worst fucking nightmare come to life. And it's cool to see. I've seen similar stuff done before, and that's that's what's interesting for me. I've seen the year. When did that happen? When have you seen stuff done like this before? I was thinking in terms of sci-fi in general. Um, Star Trek, you know, fucking... Far, well, maybe not Farscape. I was thinking in terms of Bloomhouse. Oh! Oh. Chills, please. Oh. The film that we shall call Good Guys in order to 
be able to. No, we might as well call the child's play now because now good guys isn't happening. They're going to do this. Well, I don't want to call it child's play because child's play is a different thing. It's point is, you had this idea before. You cocked it up by trying to pass it off as something else. Congratulations for allowing this idea to breathe on its own. It worked well. I've seen it done before. This, while not the best version of it, Megan herself, when looked at from the point of view of her capabilities and what she can do, is pretty high up there in regards AI nightmare scenario. And she proves that by the end of the movie. There are a number of red flags that as you're watching the film, they go through they go through a schematic as part of her advertising for, for being a kid's toy. And one of the first things they say is a titanium core that's so that she can take the wear and tear of life. I'm sitting there going, yeah, Jesus right. fuck. Tensile strength fuck. alone. I'm you like, know. yeah, just put a mus- missile launcher on that motherfucker. Yeah. This is how it's gonna go down. She she's a she's a full learning computer. There is a point where the team, Gemma and her team are having a conversation and a very good point is they touch on a number of ethical issues in regards to the interactions between Megan and Katie, especially considering Katie's parents have died and Gemma is allowing Megan to basically act as her counsellor. Now, there is a counsellor there that's brought in, but most of Katie's, you know, mo- most of the time when she's talking about this or if she's talking about it at all, it's to Megan and Megan hasn't conceptualized the notion of death and they're they're talking about this and they don't want megan to weigh in on this conversation just yet and off on her own she decides to start searching the web and you're sitting there and it's just like oh that's a crimson flag right there we have big issues because not what she's researching but the fact that she's doing it on her own that the, the 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 fact that Gemma has created a technology that she it's even pointed out there she doesn't fully comprehend what she's done how far she's gone the the almost miracle of technology that she has created and it bites her in the ass in a big way and like I said I've seen it done differently and better but this is for what it is is a very good rendition there are a couple of flaws with the story going along but I feel that those flaws are just. Bloomhouse flaws are the best way I can put it, you know, whereby you, 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 there's stereotypical characters. Now, they're spaced out enough and the story's good enough that they don't denigrate from it or they don't they don't detract from it. But you can see them, if, especially if, to be fair, we did review two Bloomhouse movies, can, can, you know, pretty much back to back. So maybe they're standing out a little bit more for me. But overall, I think the story is good. Um, we saw that, you know, as Johnny mentioned with the piss poor child's play remake and the reason it was piss poor is because this is the story they should have told in the first place yep. you know rather than rather than skinning it as something else and trying to pass it off as something that is a cult classic this is the story they should have done and well done for letting it go the way that they did um you know they there's not a lot of there isn't a lot of you know um extra you know extra parts that are like you know extra dialogue that be cut out everything that's in it has a purpose for being in it the the Bloomhouse parts, you know, if whether it was the writers or whoever else, they made it work. You know, the 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 stereotypical characters, they made them fit the scenarios. You can see where some things are going, and you know, once again, I think that might go to the fact that I've many of us here have seen these kind of films before. So there are certain setups where you're kind of like, oh, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. If you haven't seen them before, you're going to be surprised by them. If you have seen them before, they do them well. At least it's not, you know, they they. They don't overplay it. They don't underplay it. They do it well for as good as they can. Mm-hmm. The writing is good. There is no extraneous dialogue. There's no stupid parts in it. Overall, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good at what it did. I have seen better done. Can't off the top of my head think of where, but it's probably fucking anime style, more complex storytelling. But for what it is, this is good. I can see how this could be a stepping stone towards throw a fucking random stone. Blade Runner is the the most obvious one off the top of my head because of, once again, the fact that Megan is designed to emulate emotions. And that right there ties into the... And uh, has uncapped learning potential. Yes, tying right into simulants from Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, another Isomar story. Um, So yeah, I suppose this is probably... It is touched on the fact that someone brings up that safety protocols should have been put in and Gemma mentions, well, this is kind of a rush job. I'll put them in later. There's a lot of, they kind of, I suppose, cover the ground with the with Gemma recognizing that there are flaws oh. that she tends to fix later, and she just never gets a chance. 
I just and, feel like, you know, safety protocols, like the word says it itself, like that's some shit you just put in, you know, like that's a car with no brakes. You just want to put that shit in right at the beginning. I you, just, no, uh, you should put that shit in right at the beginning, but... I think at the time she was more focused on functioning AI than, you know, yeah. what the AI can't no, do. I get it. That's a, no, I know, but that's what I mean, like, that's right there, like, if you're like, oh, I can do this later. Wait, this is going to bite me in the somehow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. with what Johnny I think said in our, I think it was in our group chat or something like that where it's like you can definitely tell it edited down to be to fit the PG-13 rating because you, you can tell that there's probably well there, there's some gruesome results of what yeah. Megan does to some yeah. people that you don't really see happen yeah yeah. it's a lot of you have to come up with it, which is I mean it's fine I don't need to see you know full out you know decapitations and just would have been spiders. nice seeing as this is our child's play replacement yeah uh i thought the the all the actors actually did really well like mm. it, it was acted well uh, it was it, it was somewhat to the same not the same but to me it was just another one where it's kind of like what Giz said it's like you just you kind of knew it was going to happen so it didn't really yeah because we know, watched this movie in 2019 yeah, it, yeah like if if it was something where that didn't happen then it would be like oh okay but it's just like, I just kept going. And like you said, like, okay, that's going to happen. Oh, it did. That's going to happen. Oh, it did. It's like, that That was where my biggest problem with the movie was. It's just it was too predictable. Well, yeah, but it's... like, I'm kind of starting to loosen up on the whole predictability because it just seems like. <sighs> We've done We've movies, so guys. Much... Um... Right. Like, it just, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's hard to surprise anybody, especially when you're doing like the whole, you know, robotic doll. Well, well unless, unless this motherfucker comes up with a cure of cancer, the end of this movie will not surprise me or the playthrough. You know what I mean? Like, I think this can, I think this can be viewed as a variation of Eyes of Us, I Robot, whereby you have the, the rebellion. Now, admittedly, I think that's on a, that does end up being on a larger scale, but I mean, t fucking Terminator, fucking Chopping Mall, any... Any of the, you know, robots go bad storyline, this is what that is, essentially. And it's just the way that it's done is what... The way that it's done is how you set a movie like this apart from all the other times that this has been... That this story has been told. And it's like, the right. parts that I can't... Like, I like, I can't get into, because it will be spoiler mm. kind of part. But, like, the ending, the way kind of things get resolved somewhat, um, I'll tell them later, because, like I said, I don't want to say... Like did I, you know, I liked. Did I you liked, think it was good or bad? The ending. I, I, that, the way. I don't know the full ending, but like certain aspects of the ending, I was like, "Ooh, I liked that." It was a callback to something that happened yeah. earlier in the film. I liked that they called back to that, and I was like, "Okay, I like yeah. that." Did Jim? I don't want to go too far into it because it would be riddled with spoilers. Do you know the way you were saying that you couldn't trust the aunt because you had seen the actress in Get Out? Would you like you waited for me to mute my microphone to use some chocolate Ooh. to ask me a question? Oh, sorry. Anyway. I did, point, yeah. My, yeah. My point was going to be that the, the, the dude, the kind of Gemma's immediate boss, not the dude that owned the company, but her immediate boss, after seeing him in Shang Chi, the second he was on screen, I was looking, kind of going, "Oh, he's going to start placing bets on shit any second now." Kind of did. Yeah, kind of did. I will because uh, Keggs keeps asking, "Is it like uh, Spielberg's AI?" No, well, I remember AI no. was supposed to be more of like a you know build a missing piece of the family, like hey, you could build a kid or whatever. This is yep. literally like <coughs> nobody goes off the mark, or nobody ever says, "Hey, we're we're, we're adding to the family," like they're hard this is a kid's toy kid's toy like this is for the kids and it just happens to get smarter and start figuring shit they get out. they kind of make a comment of like almost like it's supposed to be a toy but then i think there was a conversation that happened where it's like i think with uh there was a psychiatrist i think it was telling mm -hmm. us like you're pretty much this is replacing you know uh, a parental figure because mm -hmm. it's it's just you know you tell everything you want a parent you parents you around the world but yeah <laughs> and now what's interesting is if you look at that if, if you look at that in terms of once again other um similar stories whereby you have ai taking over societies and becoming parental figures once again you can see how 
Megan almost works as a prequel to all that kind of stuff. It's like um, Terminator, except without the time travel. And as a parent, that whole uh, bathroom scene, dude, that hit way too close to home because it was that always telling the kid, dude, don't do that. Don't do that. And oh, then a stranger yes. would come up and go, oh, honey, don't do that. Oh, thank you, stranger. Oh, I just yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Fuck it. I must have forgot what you were talking about at first, but then I remembered. <laughs> Anyway, will we uh, jump to a trailer for Megan? Oh, yes! <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. We'll give Buzz a second oh, to stretch. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. <laughs> Limber up there, buddy. Stretch Limber up. Like tore over my pectoral. Ow. <sighs> um, I can jump in as the little girl occasionally if you want. Okay, give me a Okay. I'm going to need a second. I'm going to have to go back here <laughs> one moment. I don't know. Giz, Giz, just... Giz intently waiting. To... <laughs> no, Giz is, Giz is actually doing a quick bit of research on... Um... Do I look like little girl size there? Okay. Okay, nearly ready. Because I'm going to play the part of the little girl. Give me one sec. I'll just pop in and out as the little girl. It'll be all okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, because I, I had to turn it down for the echo. There we go. Do I look like I'm looking at Buzz? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there's there's a delay between what you say and what I see. Okay. We'll let Buzz go. I need to take his cue. Okay. So, should you were beginning the movie, uh, we're driving. Oh, my God. It's the first time that we've driven in the snow. Oh, 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 oh. I oh, love we're snow. Stop. Snow is amazing. You shut your mouth back there. Oh, fuck, fuck you, Dad. Kids, you play with your fucking $800 Furby that's poops. And I don't and like poop like and Furbies. It poops. Well, you know, okay, well, shut up. I need to talk to your mother. And we're stopped in the middle of the fucking road. And the, the, oh, no, we got hit. Oh, we're dead. Except, except the little girl. The little girl's not dead. She's got a, she's got a neck brace on, but then she quickly recovers. I'm alive, uh, and my parents and are <gasps> barely an inconvenience. Hi, hi, little girl. Uh, I'm your aunt. I'm the one that gave you that little Furby thing that kind of possibly maybe caused your parents to die. You gave me the poop uh, robot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you're gonna come live with me. I hate the poop and, robot. Yeah, you can live with me, and because I told your mom that I'd take care of you, but I think she was gonna die. Just, I don't want to live with you. Those, well, it doesn't matter. It's just uh, you got to tell your mom these things because I don't think they're gonna die. I don't think they're gonna cause you're gonna cause them to die. But anyway, come live with me. Um, don't touch any of my toys. Like these things are collectibles. Don't take these out of the box. This is I'm tired of dealing with you. Go, I'm gonna go get a robot. This robot's gonna take care of you instead of me, because I suck as a person and a, and a parent. I'm not a parent, though, but I suck. Anywho, uh, hi, hi, Megan. Want to play? Oh, that's oh my God, a robot! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be your friend to the end. You're gonna be my friend to the end. That's what I've always wanted. <laughs> yeah. sure, but there's no, there's no copyright uh, speech there. I uh, I instantaneously love you with all my heart and can't see how this could go badly. I know everything. I sing <laughs> weird, crazy songs to you when you're feeling sad. Uh, when bitch, the dog, when the dog bites you, uh, I, I I try to fix. it. Oh, uh, she needs to go to sleep. She has a temperature of uh, but uh, her temperature is getting higher. And the ants like, "Fuck! I'll just put her to bed." Goddamn stupid fucking robot! <laughs> I don't want to go uh, to bed. I don't care. Fucking do it. 
We're only about 15 minutes of this movie. We still got a whole bunch more to go. So just do what I fucking tell you so we can get to the parts that people really want to see. Okay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> go to bed. And then, I don't know. She's not, she's not hanging anymore. I was like, she was kind of hanging from the thing in the beginning before they put the stuff on. You guys see the movie. Uh, and then she's just sitting there like, guy. That dog bit you. That I'm gonna kill. I'm gonna kill it. Don't oh, kill the no. dog, you crazy robot. <laughs> uh, too too late. Uh, and the ant's like, oh, look at this. Look at this toy. You can just can replace parents and friends and real people. What could go wrong? Robots are way cooler than parents and friends <laughs> and people yep. and people. They're gonna they're gonna replace the Furby. Uh, Thank God, because that thing's so covered in and, fur and it just poops all yeah, the time. I can't up. even. And like, oh, here, let's. So we got all of these investors, and they're gonna watch this awesome new robot of the future, Megan. And they're like, oh my god, they that she was sad, and she she couldn't tell a human person how she was feeling because the human person has no feelings and is cold and just shuts her out from the beginning of the fucking movie, and just she just becomes this big burden because she's a big toy inventor. She has other things to do. She can't take time to take care of a child. She has to get a robot to do it, and robots. the robot listened. Yay. The robot listened. And it and it taught to her and told her things will be okay. Listen, your mom's voice, your voice, telling the story about your mom and the happy day that she found a rat or something or a roach. That was weird. Um, and there was a happy His story. Mom loved, mom loved rats. Um, yeah, she loved it. It was cockroach because she didn't. Uh, she loved her sandwich. And it, any creature of the dumpster, mom was a big fan. Yeah. So, oh my God, that robot that will. The, this is this is the investors. This robot will take oh, like I won't have to be a parent anymore. I just get this robot, and I don't have to do anything. Yay, just, robot! Like, even yeah, um, and a lot of bunch of shits like, oh, should we be doing this? Oh, it's kind of learning a lot very quick, and oh, that can't be a problem. Let's just push it out to market and get it out of there, and then I'm dancing, guys. I can't get up and dance because you're just you're looking at crotch. So you're just you're gonna you're gonna have to up Thank that you. dance. Thank you. She she definitely li- picks up the pace there a little bit. I can't. I, I can't move. One two one two one two one two. Swing Let's those go. Arms. Let's go. Do it to Beyonce. Let's go. Let's go. All the single I, ladies. I got a All the single ladies. All the single <laughs> ladies. All the single ladies. And everybody's fucking dead. Megan, don't trust. Don't trust the internet and computers. <laughs> And the lady of uh, Get Out and Bloomhouse because they make uh, sometimes they make okay movies, other times they don't. No, so I it's hate probably Blumhouse about a 70 30 percent, well. not, not as much 70, as 70 percent shit, 30 percent is okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's about it. 